Hey y'all, I'm forwarding the live. For those of y'all that don't know what I'm doing here, I'm forwarding the live. Hope you will too. Get a bunch of folks on here that don't ordinarily get on here. Maybe get some new folks in here and uh, get some discussion going as to what we're actually doing here in this good old world. I had we we just I had a B meeting and I had to pick up D uh, afterwards and. Uh, so that's where we're at. Boom. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. And everybody, praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? This is a great day. God is good all the time and all the time. Squirrel sleepy, y'all. It's just because she gets up at like three in the morning and goes to work. I mean, other than that, I don't know why. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're glad you're here, though, Squirrely Whirly. Uh, sure was glad to have you on the live this afternoon. That was awesome. Uh, I'm just getting started. It's 9.35, so, you know, we'll have ourselves an abbreviated thing. Hello, Teddy J. Praise God. Right back at you. Hallelujah. I have to babysit grown men at work. I, you know what? When my wife, um, <clears throat> we were at the post office, and my wife was... Uh, what they call it. it's a 204 position and all it means is a designation that means you're a practice supervisor and that's what she did she said she said all i do is babysit people and i was like i hear you that's that's basically what it is um uh, they, they just babysit they don't get to have a, a a real communication with nobody it's just babysitting grown adult men and women that cannot function. We need to have special prayer this evening for uh, Sarah Lou. Sarah Lou, hey Kenneth. Sarah Lou is uh, at the emergency room right now. She said, I'm not going to tell everything I know, uh, but she's uh, at the ER and uh, she needs prayer tonight. Uh, they don't, it's undetermined, so there ain't no sense in, in being subjective. She hadn't hurt herself or nothing like that. She's having tests run. Uh, 27 men, no women, so it's hard sometimes. I know that's right. Oh, Trish, not me. Well, Sarah Lou, thank you. I was sitting there reading that thread, and I thought it was, well, praise God. Okay, so Trish is at the hospital, y'all. We're having special prayer for Trish. Sarah Lou straightened me out. <laughs> and, uh, we'll, well, we'll pray for Sarah Lou anyway, because she's heading up the uh, <clears throat> the uh, Unity uh, Revival. Um, Sarah Lou, when, in, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to get you to hit on her for me. And... Uh, my little sister, she has some stomach problem. Could be a um, John, the John, the guy. We certainly can. Do you want to give us her name? We can put it on the list right here. Um, we got it. Here's our list right now. Um, Lacey for cancer. Mom for her dementia. Cassian born premature. Crystal for spiritual warfare. Naomi. Curtis for MS. Naomi. Uh, stomach issues. Naomi for stomach issues. Cheryl for her heart and lungs and for her salvation and her family. Sherry for a job. Ba baby Ella Rose for her heart and health. Cheryl for salvation. Naomi for her stomach. Mark for um, lungs, eyes, brain, and spine. Love for lungs and for lungs. Sam Sam had a cancer removed. Shell for health. Pat Twiggs. Linda Her Her Harrington. For her lungs. Ozzy, y'all notice there's a whole bunch of lungs on here? Could you pray for my little sister? Yeah, I, I got her back here. That's Naomi. <clears throat> Linda Harrington for lungs. Ozzy to sell her house. Tammy, lungs. Sarah Lou, you think there might be something to this? Praying too fast, struggling. Thank you. All right. Well, amen. <laughs> Don't forget Arkansas. We're not forgetting Arkansas and the storms of the surrounding states. Hank K for extreme prostate, Scott Basin for his heart, Jonathan to come home and get renewed, Joe, Renee, Carter, Alex, and Tyler, Cisco, Padilla to come back to the Lord and get his life straightened out, Hayden, Emily, and Becca, our troops wherever they are, the USA and Israel, Julia for her health, Bracelin has Rett syndrome, Vicki Collins, Trump, Mikey for bladder pain, Adriana for her family, Cupcake and Snicker, Miss BM for spiritual authority and finances, Sherry Posey for lymphedema, Sandra Taylor and Trey Walton also, Miss BM for unspoken, praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, Jay, praise God. It's good to see you, man. 
I'm new to your life, but I believe the power and prayer. God can and will work miracles anytime. Amen to that, say mama. Amen to that. Uh, could you pray for employment and revelation for me, please? Erica needs employment and revelation. Yes, ma'am, we can. Employment and revelation. Praise God. Yes, ma'am, we can. Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Remember, we're going to pray for Trish, of course. Well, I love you for all the healings and the victories. Thank you. Right now, in Jesus' name, God, we come to you in faith, believe, and trust in you, the one true God, the everlasting Father and Prince of Peace, the King, the Mighty, the Holy, the Alpha, the Omega. God, help us, Lord, in this. Help us, Lord, move on us and, and heal our binds, our bodies, and our souls. Help us, God, to be the people that we need to be in this hour, this hour you have called us to be here. <sighs> Lord, we worry about our children, but we know that you have called them for such a time. We can take our grace in this and understand, Lord, that these children are ready and prepared coming into this world. This is the world they know. It's a world that has passed our understanding in a lot of ways, but God, it hasn't passed yours. It hasn't passed yours, Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray for these young people that are coming up, Lord, that you would that you would send revival in their ranks, that you would send evangelists with the words of truth and light into their lives, that they would be healed. God, we're going to pray for right now for <clears throat> for Erica, for uh, employment and revelation, for Naomi, uh, for her stomach. God, in Jesus' name right now, for Miss Trish right in the hospital right now. God, let 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 them let let them find nothing. Let her come home healed. Lord, touch her with the finger, Lord, in Jesus, your finger, your finger of love, your finger of healing, your virtue. Let it flow in Jesus' name on all of us here tonight. On all of the needs we've called out. On all of the needs that are still on the list. We can't call them out. All Lord, we'll be here all night. Lord, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. We still plead the blood. We still plead the stripes of Jesus over each and every need. We plead the blood. We plead your grace and mercy. And we ask you, Lord, to keep your hand upon us and minister to us and help us to be the people that we need to be in this hour, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Kate, good to see you, dear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, there's so many good things happening. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will start and we will we will focus solely on bad things. It always happens. All right, exactly. We want to focus on the good things. I want to focus on what God is doing positive in the lives of people that I know. I, listen, we know bad things happen, but let me tell you something, that bad things happen. Don't give the devil a full 24-hour period. Something bad happens, cause you 10 minutes of distress, and you spend the rest of your day walking around. Um, I think that's what she said, wasn't it? Sarah Lou, that she was going in for tests. Um, bad's only a season. Prayer for Roy. Oh, yeah, okay. Prayer for Roy. Roy's going in for some tests, and we need to pray for him. In Jesus' name, Lord, be with Roy. These these tests are important, God. I pray they come back and it, that Roy receives a healing in this, God. Whatever it is, that, that the tests are, are gone, but so is the malady that caused him to go and have it checked out. Hallelujah. God, we praise you for this in all things, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, folks, listen. When we step out in faith, when we step out by faith, we step out of the boat. Peter stepped out of the boat onto the, the storm and sea. It was Peter's job to step out. It was God's job to firm the ocean up so he could walk across it. We've got to do our part. Sometimes you've got to go into an unsettled situation. Sometimes you've got to go where the storm, the sails are are the billowing and it's look they don't look nothing conducive to getting out there in, in, in that but you, you got to do something that you've never done before if you do the same things over and over why are you expecting a different result when you do the same things the same way over and over and over why do you expect a different result what Boom. The the uh, the definition of, of, of lunacy is, you know, you do the same thing the same way and you expect to get something different. No, we want to, we don't want to do that. We want to see the will of God in our lives. And the way to get the will of God in our lives is we got to do away with our own will. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, hey there, Sturgill. What's happening, Lonnie? <clears throat> you know, fight on your knees. Uh, that um, Jackie Velasquez, um, 
years ago. I don't know if y'all know. I know the, the chorus that went, I go to war on my knees. It's not flesh and blood I battle, but principalities. I'm fighting for my loved ones. And I don't do that. Go right, go as I go before I go to war on my knees. Anyways, <clears throat> we're glad you're home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before I do any of that stuff, folks, I'm going to have to burn some of this. And throw in my I was at a bee meeting, and so I didn't get to start. Um, as, as, after the bee meeting, I was talking to a fella. Um, I can't remember what he called it, Sarah Lou, but you were talking about running... Um, copper wire under your plants and uh electro something other anyway he said that he takes he's got tons of fruit trees and he takes <coughs> copper wire and runs it like a, clockwise around a bamboo pole or something like, akin to that drives it about six inch six eight inches into the ground and goes above it it's got to go above whatever tree it's next to but the higher it goes, the further out it spreads. And he said, and this will keep the bugs from getting on your, your fruit trees. He said, he don't have any problem with any bugs on his fruit trees. It, it, uh, yeah, the, it, that's what, I don't know what he called the science, but yeah. And he said, he said it's as long as it, the, the antenna is above the highest part of the tree, that it will actually keep the insects and bugs from getting on these trees and so that it makes the tree, because the bugs see in infrared, the tree looks healthy. Well, the bugs the, the go to clean up what's unhealthy so they don't see it as being a, a viable plant for them to clean up. So they go to the next one down. And <clears throat> it, I don't know. Uh, he keeps bees, and um, I, was I was willing to try it. Um, Another guy was telling me, he said, you can get a grant and, so I, and find out. And I was like, man, I can see that get a grant, grant for doing what I'm already doing. Because my fruit trees are right next to my bee boxes. So if I if I stick up one of them things in the ground, I will be testing it. So um, I was I was thinking I might I actually shoot up and hit the um, University of Georgia Extension side and see whether or not I get a grant to keep my bees. <laughs> No government welcome here, LOL. I know that's right. Uh, hey, Cheryl, praise God. Well, I just got through praying for you, girl. But <clears throat> if y'all think about that, um, he he also, the same guy, also has a converter on his car. He's already, he's got a converter on his car. His car is one-third ran on water. He's, how do you run it on water? You, you spin it off and, and make it, and it pulls hydrogen out of it. Well, the water doesn't diminish. It continues to run. It's amazing. But he said he gets one-third of his gas mileage. Uh, is, is, it was boosted by one-third when he put this hydrogen um, thing on there. I wrote it down. It's in, a, it's in a note, but it's on my phone, so I can't pull it down right now. And uh, we were talking about that, and he said that if you put these things in your flower beds, these antennas, that it'll ionize the soil and you don't have to use um, fertilizer because it locks, the, it locks the nutrients in the soil. So your plants actually use the nutrients, but the nutrients don't leave. How it works, I don't know. But here's the funny part, folks. Um, there's a lot of things we don't know, you know. Um, Back in 1913, when the Rockefellers took over the, um, they did, they, they took over the medical professions. They moved to AMA and they started, they knocked off. The first thing they did was to ridicule anybody that was a snake oil salesman. And the, the thing about it is, is a lot of that snake oil stuff worked. It was alcohol based. That's true. But it's because alcohol will cause what's in it, what the, 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 the chemical base in the bottom of it, it, it generate what is it, it activates, it causes it to to become what it needs to become in its in its inert form, it wouldn't have helped you. But the alcohol brought that out and then all of a sudden it helps a person to um <clears throat> to to actually 
take care of headaches and stuff like that. Um, gout, I don't know what all. But, um, you know, the, the, the medical profession is not set up to cure you. If it cures you, then you're well. If it, if it treats you, then you're a customer. It's not set up to make you well. It's set up to make you a customer. That's why uh, I, I, I believe, I firmly believe that they've had a cure for cancer for years. If y'all remember not a few years ago, it was big news for 13 seconds. Um, I did not, Sarah <clears throat> the, the, the 13 seconds or so where Israel, the two scientists in Israel found a cure for cancer and it got swept under the rug. Why? Because big business don't want you to find a cure for what they're, you know, getting you nanotech and soda. Wow. I did not say that. How about that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, it, it's, it's been out there. I believe they've had it for years. Um, why do I believe that? Well, you're just a conspiracy theorist. Well, I might be, but I want you to understand this. All right. When you start looking at government, government in, is in cahoots with, with big business. I mean, you know, who's their biggest donors? It ain't me and you. Okay. Um, so what do you, what do you think they're doing? Um, you know, they don't, they, they don't want, they don't want to run out of business. As long as you stay sick, you're a customer, you know? So I think they've, I think they got cures for a lot of things. They just not let anybody know. And you know, people say, well, well, you, you, you're saying that they would let these, these children die. They don't know those kids, you know? And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not being crass towards the children. I'm telling you that's them and they're focused. They don't know that ain't their kids. Their kids get cured. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> If I don't, uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Farrell, uh, it, Dot, that's exactly right. <clears throat> a exactly the will, yeah, the the the. Uh, well, you have to understand if you if you understand that the um, there were three jabs, three series of jabs, and the first one um, there was um, I can't remember what the ratio, but it's like 20% of people had an adverse reaction. In the second one, it was like 8% of people had an adverse reaction. In the third one, 0% of the people had an adverse reaction. Okay. Now, not in the United States, but overseas, there are people who are, who are suing the pharmaceutical companies because there's only one way that you can have 0% adverse reactions. There's only one way that you can have 0%, and that is you put saline in it. You charged them for the same stuff, but you didn't. And so the, the, the common denominator involved in all of this is that little, um, that little comedy show we had during 2020, okay? And uh, what my understanding is, is if you got one of the first two, then what you did is you got a platform, you got a, if you will, a chalkboard, and that these things could work off of a demographic. That is to say that they could they could release the uh, is it um, is it CERN or harp harp? They can release a certain frequency in the harp, and that that would. Um, agitate or release in a certain demographic of people. And it could be any demographic that they wanted to, you know, um, reduce, um, for whatever reason they chose. But because basically they put the, the chalkboard in us all, the, the, not me cause I'm pure blood, but they put the ramping in there. Wow. Wow. That's that's terrible, Sir Lou. Um, but you know, when we talk about this, it, they they call it conspiracy, but it's not conspiracy. Not when you're seeing it, it played out in front of you. This isn't conspiracy. We're seeing this in real time. We're seeing we're seeing world class athletes become unalived. 
doing what they love to do in the prime of their life. We're seeing it in front of us. We never had SAD. We had SID, sudden infant death syndrome. All right, now we have sudden adult death syndrome. Now, one of the things, and you can Google this, it's entirely Googleable, um, is that, um, yeah, I know it. I know it, Sarah Lou. Um, is that the SIDS, the majority of the SIDS cases occurred about 10 days after, within 10 days of, of you know, taking care of your child and all that stuff. Well, uh, this is educational purposes only, comedic value, not meant to be true in any form or fashion, by the way. Um, you know, wow. Oh my goodness, girl. Wow. So anyways, that, that's the, the idea, is that it becomes a format. Now, Sarah Lou, I need you to come on and talk for a minute. I gotta go upstairs and get some coffee. I, I had to brew it when I come running in. Is that okay? Coffee with Cleo Comedy Hour. Exactly. See, Sarah knows me. She just knows me, y'all. <laughs> if I go off the air, don't worry about me. Y'all just listen to Sarah. Hello, lady. Hey, how are you? Uh-oh. I think it muted you again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. I hope everything is going well for everybody. Um, we, uh, we've been doing a lot of garden preparations here. Our frost date time is um, May 15th here. Um, which I don't think it's going to frost anymore, but I'm not going to take a chance. But I know all you guys are are gardening and stuff or getting ready and whatnot. Um, I just, a couple tips for you guys. Um, when, when you're planting your tomatoes, um, I know a lot of people say put eggshell and whatnot in the bottom of them for calcium. And it does help with that little uh, dark spot dried out spot that gets on the blossom end of the tomato which is called blossom end rot if you take your eggshells and you put them in a mortar pestle um, after you've dried them out real good and powderize them and put them down in the hole your tomatoes can actually utilize them and it doesn't take as long to break down um, if you know anybody who's got bunnies pet bunnies ask them to save the poo for you Bunny poo doesn't burn your plants. You can use it directly. You don't have to wait for it to break down. Um, oh my goodness, what else? Let's see. Gardening, gardening. <laughs> I've been in the greenhouse most of the day today. You'd think I'd be able to spiel stuff off. <sighs> it's not fun having nobody talk to you. <laughs> uh, well... We'll talk about revival too. I, I got a lamb in the background that's hollering. They hear me. Um, they're fussing and ready to come in. I know my sweet babies. They're not so sweet. They're bratty. They're ready to come in for the night. <laughs> oh, saved by Clell. <laughs> so real quick before he gets back on uh, revival, Memorial Day weekend at the Clark County Royalton Fairgrounds, Berryville, Virginia. Uh, if you need information on hotels that are available in the area, uh, PM Clell or me, we can um, give you a list. Hey, Mav, um, we're looking forward to it. Um, we, we've got um, Clear Creek, Flat River, uh, High Mountain Bluegrass are all playing. Also, so all three days uh, we'll have live bluegrass worship bands. Um, and then Clell's going to gonna do some service and I think Pastor Violet maybe is going to hopefully maybe he'll come up with Clell and um, well I've got you cornered and you can't protest sir make sure you bring a cooler with you so I can send you some meat home with you from our farm so <laughs> but anyway I'll get off of here and uh, stop yakking and let Clell get to teaching but we'll talk to y'all later thank you all right praise god thank you sarah lou listen earlier today i got on for about an hour 
And I was talking about, um, I was talking about forgiveness. One of the one of the topics that I talked about was forgiveness. I talked about praying and fasting and reading and revival. And uh, but one of the things that I talked about was was forgiveness. And the the idea that I was trying to convey, and I can't promise you I got it, but I, I like to think I did, is that forgiveness is not necessarily for the person that hurt you. Forgiveness is for you. Because if you forgive from something, then that releases you from the event so that you can go on and live the rest of your life. You can become a victor over the event, not a victim of it. And um, because of the way that uh, the people that I've been around my entire life, um, I know something about that. All right. And uh, I've, uh, I've, 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 counsel with so many people. I'm not a certified counselor. I'm a pastoral counselor. Um, but I, if you, if you want certified counselor, my pastor, um, is, is a certified counselor, um, for the state of Georgia, actually. But, uh, I, I've talked to so many people and, and it'll start out and uh, not on purpose. Okay. Um, when, when you talk to people, you say, listen, uh, you're sitting there having a chat and conversation and talking to people, typically speaking, it will be ladies. And they, they, they're they like, this has happened more than once in my life. I've never told anybody this, but uncle, brother, cousin, aunt, mama. Okay. And you, you're like, holy guacamole nobody's safe okay um the statistic that was released nationally is four in ten women and something like two in eleven men now you say okay well what's what's the difference what um i'll tell you what the difference is if y'all really want to know what the difference is first and foremost is that men don't tell Women don't tell for their own reasons. Men don't tell because of the embarrassment, because to be a man is to be masculine. It's not to, not to, not to have it. There's, it's in our psyche and persona. We're the protectorate, <coughs> etc. <cetera. coughs> Those numbers are old, by the way. Um, they're, they're at least f five years old. All right. So has it gone up or down? What would you think? In our, in our society as it is today, they're trying to redefine what abuse is. So, you know, those numbers will change. I'm talking about forgiveness though. Way up. Uh, we're talking about forgiveness. If this event, if something bad has happened to you at some point in your life, and something bad has happened to all of us, but we know that we're ta not talking about somebody stealing your lunch. Okay, um, still in your innocence, you know, kind of stuff, if you will. Um, and uh, to the point of being malicious, um, our my my pastor when I was in in is now a bishop, but um, he was a minister with uh, ministering to the Cab County, Georgia, and. Uh, he was there one night and they brought a baby in and uh, they had taken him from this man. And the baby had cigarette burns on it, but they were all below the diaper where you couldn't see them. And he said they were, they were he was chaplain. Um, he, he said, these, they, they were full grown men. These are tough men. These are tough, honestly. And they're, they're crying and they're like, let me, let me in there. Let me get him. And, and, and the, the Lieutenant said, listen, we have got to be careful as much, as much as we want to get in there. If we do, this guy will go free because the law protects too many times the guilty. Um, that was, that was what they were saying. Um, but you know, 
there's all kinds of there's all kinds of of men and women out there who um <laughs> somebody block that idiot please um you know there's there's all yeah right when i uh, when i was in the um when i was in the uh military i had a uh, this young guy he married a girl and she was the first time i ever laid eyes on her she's getting out of a truck she is a gangly little 16 17 year old she might have been 18 i don't know okay she was she was a, a gangly little girl going you know busting out puberty and kind of stuff but he married her and you know um so i <laughs> get him adriana <laughs> so uh about three four years later um she had had two kids and she had felt she'd become a woman okay now she was you know first time i ever laid eyes on her she was a little pimply you know had to had the complexion of a of a of a of a girl that didn't know how to you know take care of her complexion and so um you know i wasn't chasing after her you know but um couple to three years, a couple of kids, she grew up some and she turned into a nice looking lady. Now, nice looking, I never saw her up close. So I'm not going to tell you she was pretty. I'm telling you she's nice. I saw her a few times more away and I was like, well, you know, good for you, Jimmy. Well, what, what, what his problem was is that he would, he was diminished by her growing into a woman. It somehow or another, in my estimation, caused him to have trouble with it. And so, um, yeah, so he, beat her up and stuff anyways that was to, to your point her daddy jumped in the truck and drove down he was on the air force base and he's like you know i'm having to talk to this guy he's the drunk swearing off of him now and he's like i want to talk to my father-in-law i said he wants to talk to you he said oh I just want five minutes i said that's what he wants five minutes that's all he wants i said it, 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 i just i just need to talk to him i said he didn't come here to talk to you he didn't come talk to you at all yeah, well, I just need, I can make money. I said, boy, I said, he does understand. He understands that you beat his little girl. Okay. And I didn't have a little girl at the time. I had a little, I had a son, but I was like, you know, and, uh, they ain't nothing to make me more happy than to go down the hall for a soda and him accidentally get in here with you. Cause in five minutes, when I come back, I wouldn't have nothing to do but clean up the mess, you know, anyway. What I'm talking about, though, is forgiveness. And uh, d d does that does that man deserve forgiveness from that woman? No. He he never repented, as far as I know. He never repented. He never apologized to her. They took him and put him through CC 30 days and, and cleared him out. And then they put him 30 days in correctional custody. And during that time, of course, he found Jesus. And, and listen, all well and good, find Jesus. But see, I already know something that, that I, I've known for a long time. It's called jailhouse Jesus. I knew what was going on with him. If you find Jesus, the chaplain's on your side. This is a new convert. I got, I've got a winner here. Okay. And so he, he did his thing. He come through and, and uh, we had to get him and go and, and sign for him. And, and it was just ridiculous. The point of it is, did he deserve did he deserve forgiveness? The point of it is, well, none of us deserve forgiveness. Okay? You don't for deserve forgiveness. I don't deserve forgiveness. That's why it's forgiveness. If you extend forgiveness... That's what you're doing. So when a, hey, Joey, so when a, how's your back? So when a person tells you, um, you know, I deserve forgiveness. Um, no, you don't. None of us do deserve forgiveness. So uh, under that anecdote, why would I forgive a person who doesn't deserve forgiveness? <clears throat> answer is so you can be free of the event okay so that you can be free of the event you can be free to live your life to the fullest and the way to do that is to forgive that person so that you're not anchored to the event 
through unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will chain you to a negative event in your life. You forgive that person and ting, the chain is broke free and you're going downfield. Now you've forgiven that person, then you forgive yourself. But I didn't do anything. I know, I know. I'm not saying you did. Forgive yourself anyways, because there is part of our psyche part of the way we were raised, part of the way we were taught that makes us somehow feel like I must have been responsible for, for what happened to me. Okay. I don't know why, but we forgive that person and then we turn and you forgive yourself for whatever my part was. God, forgive me. I forgive me. Why? Because you don't have need to have uh, self blame in your situation. And sometimes forgiveness is a process. The first thing I want to do is I want to intend to forgive. And, and when I say it's a process, understand this. Okay. If you give me a paper, I forgive you, but you didn't forgive me. Okay. It starts with an intent to forgive because some of these hurts go so deep into the very fabric of who we have become. They go so deep into our minds, into our emotions, into our souls, into our very beings, that kind of hurt and pain. It don't just, I don't just flip a coin and go, Oh, it's heads. I forgave him. It's not that. Hey, Curtis is going to have you back. Okay. And so when we're going to forgive, we have to make up our mind. You know what? I'm going to be through. And I want you to understand, I'm going to be through with this. I am not going to be a victim of this. I am going to be a victor over what happened to me. Now, biblically speaking, we're required to forgive. Jesus said, forgive that ye be forgiven. Okay. And, and there's a parable that talks about the, uh, the sins being because he didn't forgive the, the man that was forgiven a bunch. And, and he went down the steward and he went down and he took some guy that owned him a dollar. And he said, you're going to jail till you give him my dollar back. And then the, 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 the Lord come back and re-imputed his sin on him, re-imputed his debt on him and, <clears throat> and told him, you're going to pay every, every penny of it. Okay. Well, the point of that is, is that my, my forgiveness is contingent on my being forgiving. So I want to listen. I want to actively seek out if I own, if I hold anything against somebody that I can forgive them. And it's really not going to help them. It's helping me because if you're, if you're really sitting there thinking about something that happened to you all of your life, if, if, um, Uncle Barney, Aunt Connie, whatever, um, did something to you as you're a child and you're dwelling on that, that person is living rent free in your mind 24 to 7. Okay. They are living rent free in your head. You have made a space for them. Everything you're doing is contingent on making sure that I've answered to this person that, 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 that caused me to be this way. And you will become the consummate victim. That is to say that you will look and you will say, I wouldn't do this except that, except that, except that. But when you forgive, when you forgive that person, you chop that chain loose, you're drifting down and somebody says, Hey, didn't that happen to you? You say it did. It did. Uh, it helped me. It helped make me who I am. But at the same time, Tom and Mal, live like that in my head for years. I understand that, Donna. Okay. You got to be the new man. That's right. Evil. But you, you got to have it to unlock my daughter. I have to have. Well, Regina, she's got to do that on her own. Um, <clears throat> and you know, but we, we have to decide we have to decide that I'm going to forgive. I am, I am going to forgive. I'm going to ask God to help me forgive because we're not talking about forgiving you for stealing their $5 bill. We're not talking about forgiving them 
for um, messing up my my shirt. Okay, you know, don't don't understand that. We're not we're not doing that. We're trying to work. I can only work on me. Okay, that's right. That's right, brother brother Curtis. You know, so I want you to understand that. The first, the only person that I can really work on is me. And I want to be the best product that I can be. And so I have to be able to objectify myself. I have to be able to look at myself. There I am right there, folks. I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, what can I do to make this guy better? I'm, my only competition is the fellow I was yesterday. So yester me is the person that I'm putting the standard against. <clears throat> so when I ask, I said, God, you're going to have to help me to forgive some people who have done atrocities in my life. You're going to have to help me to forgive them because forgiving them is not in the nature of the flesh. Forgiveness is in the nature of the divine. Forgiveness is giving myself over and saying, Lord, I acknowledge, I acknowledge this hurt. I acknowledge this pain, but I've got to get over that. I have got to get over that. I've got to step away from the things that have caused me this pain. And I'm going to forgive that person in spite of what they done in spite of what I feel right now. I am determining in myself that I am going to forgive. The strongest person in the room is not the one that can lift the most weight. It's the person who can bear the most and love anyways. Okay. So let's, let's do that. And then you move into the part where you forgive yourself and listen, you know, it, I don't know which side of the coin you're falling on. You might have been the person that did wrong, and you're asking for forgiveness. The people say, well, hold on a second. Wait a minute. What do you mean? You got to forgive yourself. You may have to go to a person and ask their forgiveness. You may have done something in your lifetime to somebody intentionally or inadvertently. You may have done something to somebody and now you're going over there and you're saying, I need you to forgive me. They're looking at you like you got three eyes. What do you mean forgive you? You did it on purpose. You harmed me on purpose. You didn't even make a show of it. You were, you did this maliciously and you're, you're, you're only in. Yes, I did. And I'm sorry. And that may be all you can do. And you may you may leave it just right there. I'm, 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 I'm asking you to forgive me. And they might tell you, burn, baby, burn. You've done all you can do. You don't need to try and convince them. Okay? You, because you, you're the only person you can work on is you. And you've just done everything you can do. Okay? And so you've done that. Then you go on and live your life. And, and hopefully one day they will forgive you. Uh, but back on self forgiveness uh, and, and forgiveness in general, the person that you, that, 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 that did something bad to you has gone on to meet the Lord. Write them a letter. Okay. Write a letter. Mail it to yourself. Mail it to dead letter office at the post office. Write a letter. Uh, you hurt me. You did so and so to me. And, you know, and, and then, you will be you'll be more than impressed most people most people and when i say most i'm talking about 99 of 100 most maybe more than that <clears throat> most people in writing that letter have what is called catharsis okay and catharsis is a purge of emotion because for you to write that letter is to is for you to express to that person the hurt the pain the frustration, the degradation, it is to express to that person all of the encompassing emotion that you have had in your life that you are purging right here, okay? I forgive you. You don't deserve it, but I don't deserve it either, okay? Amen. That's right. It's like carrying an anvil through the woods 
Sarah Lou, if, if you and I have an offense and we carry an anvil, it's got two hooks on each side. And I don't know, anvils come in different sizes. The, the ones I've always seen have been 50, 75, and 150 pounds. And, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm walking through the woods and this, this offense that Sarah Lou and I are carrying and Sarah Lou goes, Hey, you know what? I forgive you. She drops her end of the anvil. She's not attached to it no more. Then I can either sit around there and fool with this anvil for the rest of my life and try and drag it on. Okay. Hey, Sarah Hall Toll, it's good to see you. Okay. I can drag it around, but it's going to hinder the way I move through life. Think about it. You're going to drag an anvil around with you every place you go. It's going to hinder you. It's going to keep you from doing what you need to be doing. So when you finally say, you know what? I forgive you too. Then you leave the anvil in the woods to collect dust and you walk away. And you may, you may never talk to that person again. You may never see them again. You may never want to. Listen, just because I forgave you don't mean I want you sitting at my table uh, for dinner. Okay, I forgave you, but I don't think that you've changed, folks. If if you if you hurt a kid, and and that kid's grown up, and they got kids, I promise you, they're not gonna want you sitting at their table because they're worried about whether you're gonna continue hurting their kids. To quote Tupac Shakur, all right, I don't want you to quit eating. I just don't want you eating at my table. Bam. Okay, very, very plainly spoken. Okay, forgiveness is not forgetting. I remember when I was a young and this fella kept telling me, you know, you forgive and forget. You forgive and forget, Chloe. You forgive and forget. And I was like, um, <laughs> how about that, Larry? You didn't know I knew stuff like that, did you? <laughs> I ain't always been a preacher. Uh, but, you know, um, you think about that, forgive and forget. You forgive and forget, and you're about doomed to repeat, okay? You're about dooming yourself to repeat in a scenario. You forgive, and you remember, but you don't You don't use it as a focal point. Like I said, you know, you forgave that person, and you just kept on going. Listen, I'm not inviting you to the house for Thanksgiving. We're not going to sit around and chat. We're not going to be best buds. No, I, you know, I'm just not going to hold it against you. And that's what the, I'm going to treat you as though the event never occurred, except in areas where that, that might come and, and, and recur. Like I said, in, when you're speaking of child um, abuse, et cetera, um, you know, uh, there was this one guy and, and his, his, his daddy, according to him, his daddy abused him. Now, did he or didn't he define abuse? Because you see, you get to you get to go in there, um, and so he was like, "And I'm not gonna let him around my kids." And I'm like, "And you got a right. You got a right to not let anybody around your kids. It doesn't matter." But with this man with the history, well, the dad's over here, and he's like, "You know, I'm asking forgiveness. I'm asking forgiveness." And he's like, "You know, I forgive you, but I'm not gonna let you around my kids." And I'm like, "I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't make a case for him on that." Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, that don't mean I got, to, I don't have to allow them into my life. I don't have to allow that. It's not a requirement. Okay, it's not, to my knowledge, it's not a requirement to allow them into your inner circle life. You work with people, if you work in a, at a, a place over there and you work with people and you end up having to work with them, you might have to work with the person that, that did you an injustice. Okay, and uh, I've, I've had to do that before. And you go out there and you, you're professional. Okay, we're not friends, we're professionals. Professionally, we're gonna interact. And when we get through, I'm gonna walk away from your account and I'm gonna be done. You know, that's it. Don't have to forgive a devil making him your friend. No, you don't. Too much truth to that, Sarah Lee. And that's where we are with a lot of, a lot. Of what, what happens in, in the world is they wanna make, you know, we, we're sitting over here and we're saying, okay, we don't, we forgive because we're, we're compelled to forgive, but that doesn't compel me to build a relationship with a person that I've forgiven. Okay. I had some people that, um, I was telling D, you know, that, um, we had some people that 
really did us some dirt or did it to her really. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I'd win them to God if I could, I'd win them to God. I would, I would witness the, the, the salvation message to them. I would do that, but I wouldn't want them coming to my church. As a matter of fact, if they came to my church, I might have to change churches. I wouldn't tell them they couldn't come to my church. Do you understand that? I might leave because I don't want to be around them that much. Um, you know, but that, that's, that's, that's a road, a bridge you cross when you get to it. Don't try and, and decide what you're going to do in the, in the brainstorming phase of problem solving. Don't try to come up with the con conclusion because you haven't even stored up all the facts yet. Does that make sense enough? I mean, that's where I'm at. I, I, uh, I have been on this forgiveness kick for a few minutes. Um, and one of the things when, as a pastor, when, when I would, um, deal with some of the people that, that, um, was in, in, even in the, in the air force and I was dealing with people that didn't get along and I would tell them, I said, listen, um, you know, shake hands and come out smiling. And I'd have people tell me, well, you don't understand. Um, I'm not forgiving that person. They did it intentional and they've apologized. And the truth of the matter is that's all they can do. And so we're a team. So we have to work together here. Okay. They're not going to transfer you out because you don't like this guy or you don't like that girl or, or she wouldn't date you. And which is typically about half the time what it was is some old guy what well, wanted to date this chick. Now, if the chick wanted to move out, she had a better chance of getting moved out than the guy did. Why? Because for all the reasons that the politically correct people say aren't there. All right. They're liars. Uh, you want to tell it tonight, Sarah Lynn? If we can hear the bleating of the sheep over your shoulder, it'll be great. Uh, anytime you're ready, just hit the little button. <laughs> We'd love to hear it uh, because this is what we're talking about tonight. Um, yeah, guys that help remove that, you know. Um, you know, all the all the things that, that, that the politically correct world says don't happen. Sure they do. Now, if I go off the air, here comes Sarah Lou. She's going to give her testimony. Y'all don't worry about me, okay? I'll be fine. Come on, Sarah Lou. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> you can hear me, but I can't hear Clell. Darn tick talk. It doesn't want to work. So... I have a very interesting testimony about forgiveness and I won't get into all the fine details because that's neither here nor there and it's water under the bridge. But I had lost my mama um, to cancer and some things had transpired beforehand that um, I had was holding her accountable for. And I had tried and tried and tried to forgive her. and. I could not find it in myself to do that just because, it, you know, when you're dealing with especially a parental figure, once trust is broken, it, it doesn't just break your trust. It, it breaks your heart. And I was praying on it and praying on it. You know, Lord, please let me find forgiveness for her. I, you know, I know she never knew that I was angry because I didn't find out things happened until she had already passed. And I'm very thankful for that, that that transpired that way. Um, but one evening when I went to bed, um, I had been praying about it and praying about it. And I had a dream. And I was standing in this vast uh, place. And it was like very foggy and gray. And it was almost like I was a little child. And it, the coolest thing was I could see it looked like a gentleman's hand standing beside me, but much bigger than mine, like I was a small child. And I was just standing there and I felt very comforted. And I looked out across this vastness and it was just gray, gloomy vastness. And I didn't realize at first what I was looking at. And then I started seeing the heads of people. And I looked up 
and it looked like I was looking all the way to the sky to see this person standing beside me. And I just knew that I needed to look for somebody and I didn't know who. So automatically I, I started saying, well, I think these are people that are past. And I, I was looking for my dad, which I did not find there. And all of a sudden I found my mama standing amongst these people in the stream. And she looked very sad and just despaired. And I know that was me holding on to the guilt that I felt myself for not forgiving her. And I went out away from this big gentleman that I was standing beside and I just looked at her and, and I, I just started weeping and I told her I was sorry. I was sorry. I was so sorry that I didn't forgive her and that I did now and that I loved her and, you know, all of that mush, all of that mush. And I woke up with true forgiveness in my heart for her. That you would not believe the weight that was gone because of that. And, you know, especially when it's somebody that's close to us, we don't realize that our unforgiveness for that person weighs so heavy on our spirit. We're not meant to be that way and hurt runs deep hurt cuts deep and there's so many different types of hurt but the hurt that comes in your spirit and your soul when you trust somebody and love somebody so much and you know we have to we have to sometimes look at things and and realize that sometimes people don't know exactly what they're doing to somebody else and they don't realize that something that they do an inequity or a misstep or something that at the time they may not even feel is wrong just weighs on us and then we weigh on ourselves too because we don't forgive people and i honestly believe the lord gave me that dream to help me gain forgiveness for her so if you are struggling to try and find forgiveness in your heart Ask him to help you because, you know, the Lord listens to our prayers. I'm telling you, he, he has been ever so faithful with my prayers and I am very undeserving of his faithfulness. <laughs> and he is always there with little tiny things. Um, <laughs> you know, our, our, our Lord is still a miracle worker. And, and there are often times that my cousin Francis that comes on here occasionally, I call her and I tell her, I got a little tiny miracle just for me today. And I know it was because there's no other way that you could explain them, but it wouldn't matter to anybody else in the whole scheme of the world, just me. So if all else fails and you cannot find it on your own, ask the Lord for it and he will provide it because that's what he does. So that's my testimony on forgiveness. So I will jump back off so we can hear you, Clell. Thank you so much. What a beautiful testimony. Uh, earlier, <clears throat> earlier, Curtis was saying um, that. Up here a little bit further. Forgiveness should come from a genuine place of compassion and understanding rather than from a desire for personal gain or recognition. That's, that's so true. Listen, the, the point of, that I was trying to make earlier was that the, the point in this forgiveness that we're talking about right now is to release us from it, okay? Compassion, okay, and understanding Jesus forgave us or made Jesus made provision through his blood sacrifice for us to obtain grace instead of judgment for us to be allowed to be saved. <clears throat> we should come from, if, if you, if you come for forgiveness, it's going to come from a point of, of compassion. Okay. It's an understanding that, like I said, I was earlier speaking is 
I want to be the best person I can be. I'm the only person I can walk up, work on to get these people from living in my head rent free, to keep these people from dictating what my decisions are going to be, to keep them out of the decision making process that they, every time I turn around, I'm going to make a decision to do something, but no, I'm not going to do that because I remember what so-and-so did to me a long time ago. I can come free of that and forgive them. And now I can live my life on my terms. Now, when I say my terms, I'm speaking in a godly sense, and that is to say I can live my life for God without reference to this event. I become a victor over the event, not a victim of the event. And think about it like this. I am a victor over the event, not a victim under it weighted down by it. You think about it like that. If you're a victim, this, look at my hands, this, this, this event keeps pushing you down. It keep you you can't make decisions because you've got to remember this event. When you forgive and you are, a, a, you're overcomer, you're over the event. It's there. Yeah, we know it happened. Okay. But I forgive it. And now I don't have the voices in my head of people telling me I'm inadequate. I'm, I'm whatever the, the thing, you know, you got to do this, whatever it is, the abuse, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, listen, don't negate the emotional and the spiritual damage that are done. They used to tell us, you know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I, I rephrase that sticks and stones may break my bones but words will scar me deeper than a stick or a stone that ever hit. Okay. And, and, and know that I'll carry these, these things in the in, inside, you know, a stick. I show you the scar over here. See where that rock hit me, but I can't show you where those words hit me. Okay. Uh, you know, words, words are, are some of the worst things that people do because I can go straight into the, I, I can go straight into the very, uh, if you will, the, the base of a being of a person with words because it can move in there. Oh, wow. Well, praise God, Adriana. Thank you for that testimony. Adriana just forgave somebody because Someone in her past that she saw on Facebook and she just forgave her. Praise the Lord. That's what we're here for. Okay. Because you see, that makes me a better person. Okay. And when, when people speak these, these horrendous words to people and listen, they do it all the time. Okay. This is not something that's like it's happened once in my life. People who are verbally abusive are always verbally abusive. It seems like the, um, the, there's, um, there's this man that's one time and they, there were several, um, women at the post office and they said, you know, I said, he is just so, he says, he th I said, I said, he's never said anything like that to me. And they said, well, yeah, but you're a guy. And so the next time I went over, I, I you know, he was all, Hey, man, what's up? I said, I said, talk to me like one of the girls. What do you mean? I said, you know, Talk to me like one of the girls. Talk to me like one of the ladies that are walking around up and through. What do you mean? What do you mean? I said, you know, abusive and nasty and ugly. Well, I mean, oh, you know, I'm, just, uh, I'm just joking. I said, no, you're not. You're not just joking. I said, if, if you were just joking, they'd be laughing. And none of them are laughing. Okay. And so, exactly, sweet pea. Um, and, you know, and so, uh, and he shaped up his tongue. He quit. You know, he quit being abusive with his language. But, you know, a lot of people, and, and you don't know which ones are which. A lot of people will take these things to heart. Okay. Something that you make a casual remark. And I, I had this, this one woman, um, I, I, it was a casual remark. And, and she come up to me and she said, Claire, what did, what did you mean? I don't even remember what I said. It's been that many years ago. She said, what did you mean? I said, oh, usually I, I mean what I say. So what did I say? And she told me what I said. And I said, that's what I meant. And she said, that hurt me. And I said, why? And she said, I felt like you were talking to me. I said, you weren't even in the conversation. I was talking to another man, number one. I wasn't talking about a person. I was talking about a job situation. You know, I do remember the parameters. I was talking about a job situation. I wasn't talking about a person. And I certainly wasn't talking about you. And if I've hurt you, 
I apologize because I definitely did not intend to hurt you. And so we became fast friends. She's gone on to meet the Lord now. Um, you know, um, but you know, listen, you can, you can hurt somebody. And you need to listen. If you accidentally, incidentally hurt somebody and they come to you, then apologize for my part. Can you please send me a prayer cloth? I need uh, all you got to do. Is send me a, a mailing address. You still got the same one, Larry. Um, just send me a message with a, with your mailing address on there real quick. And I will certainly send you one to be in the mail tomorrow. It's, it's exactly sweet pea. Um, people do that all the time. It's, it's easy. It's like frowning and it's like frowning and, um, and smiling. It takes two muscles to smile. It takes two muscles to smile right here. And it pulls up the corners of your mouth. And, mm, I'm smiling. It takes, I'm going to say it's like 22 or 12 or 14 to frown. You have to pull your face in. Mm. You got to do all kinds of things. But people walk around with a frown stuck on their face like nobody's business. You're like, how in the world? Why do you do that? Okay, why do you do that? Well, they do it because they do it. Okay. They do it because that's who they want to be more than they want to be. You've got, I think uh, Curtis said earlier, you've got to want to be free of the event, free of the event. Um, the altercation, free of whatever it is. You got to want that more than anything else, because if you don't, then whatever anything else is, um, <laughs> resting mean face. I don't know what that is, Sarah Lou. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, listen, if that's who you are, listen, if your face, it, it's, it, that's the way your face is. It's not nearly as important as how your heart is. And there's so many people that can't get past the part where you don't have to be that Jack Donkey. Okay. If you, do you understand what I'm saying? I had a, a guy at work. He worked at being a Jack Donkey. I worked next to him for 20 years. And every time you turned around, the one thing you could count on was if there was a way, if, if, if there was a way to throw a baby Ruth in a punch bowl, he was going to get, he was going to be the one doing it. He, if there was a way to get, you know, poor ammonia and Cheerios, and y'all know where ammonia comes from, you know, if there was a way to get ammonia and Cheerios, he'd be the one pouring it in there. Okay. Cause he would, if, if they were really having a good time, he would do his best to spoil it, not for the group, for an individual. It might be anybody he'd pick out somebody that he could spoil for uh, the event. Okay. Uh, and he, he, he quit trying to pick on me because he wasn't smart enough to pick on me. Um, you you got to be faster than than he was. Um, good night, Lisa Rose. Good night. Bless your heart. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So um, if you will understand that, I try. Well, yeah. Well, you know what though. But surely sometimes that smile's the only thing they get that day. And so it, and it's not about who they are. It's about who I am. That's, I have to keep that in context just like you do. It's not about who they are, okay? They didn't smile at me. No, they didn't. But guess what? I smiled at them because it's who I am, not who they are, that's going to make this conversation work out. So I can't, I can't improve. I can't make anything better in somebody else's life. If you want to make the world a better place, you make yourself a better person. And, you know, and you, you just made the world a better place for everybody that you come into contact with. I mean, come on. That's that's the best you get right there. As far as I know, that's as good as it gets. I'm going to make it the best that I can do. I want to be the best me I can be. I'm going to fight against yester me. I want to, I want to, I want to tell, I want to tell you everyone. Okay, I want to tell you, everyone, that tomorrow I want to be a better Christian. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I want to be better, and I want to be a better gardener. <laughs> That's going, I got a low bar on gardening, guys. Yeah, I'm going to probably be a better gardener. <laughs>
<laughs> forgive me. Uh, you know, I planted, I, I heard Sir Luke telling y'all, I planted my, um, I put my, my plants out today and yesterday I've got tomatoes. I only got two tomato plants. I got six or eight um, squash plants, green and yellow. And I got eight or 10 pepper plants, all bell peppers. My wife loves bell peppers, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna get me some more, um, I'm gonna get me some more tomato plants, but I gotta get me some dirt put in my, my raised beds. And and what I, I'm gonna put one of them, um, one of them antennas out in that raised bed area too. I'm gonna find out if it helps with my bees and stuff. I know you can, you know, but yeah, it's it's like working with a rock. <laughs> Curtis, <laughs> plants or items I bring home to slowly watch. <laughs> Yeah, I had a, back in the day, my, my roommate, <laughs> oh, is, 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 uh, okay, good night, backyard, see you tomorrow, Lord will, uh, I ain't got but about 15 more minutes anyways, I'm gonna get off, because me and Miss Diddy hadn't had no time day, together today, um, she demands her time, y'all, um, but I demand mine too, so, you know, it's fair, um, but I used to joke about it, I said, oh, Brett, I said, I said, Brett, Brett could kill a plastic plant. <laughs> it was terrible. I said, yeah, I said, you're the only person I know, man. This cactus died. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he was like, yeah, he said, I can't believe it. So all of the plants, all of the plants in Brett's house were, were plastic, right? So I went in there one day and, uh, and I, the big joke was, you know, you know how you can tell if, uh, you know, yeah, you can tell plant, um, Brett's natural plants. And they said, well, I said the other ones are brown. <laughs> it's like they walk through the, he walks through the door with it. He, he did it several times. We, we, uh, we went through our divorces together and, uh, we rented a house so that we could fight for custody of our kids. And he actually won his kid. So, which was amazing, but you know, um, Anyhow, I, I did not, but so uh, I, I had the upstairs and he had the downstairs and, uh, he had, he would, he would go out, he'd buy these plants. He'd get enthusiastic and he'd go buy a plant, you know, and he'd come in and, and he's like, Oh man, I got this. Look at this. Claire, look at this. I said, I said, Brent, you know, you kill everything except the plastic and then you're working on them, man. <laughs> and sure enough, about a week later, you go in that old plant. And I was like, it ain't for lack of love, you know. I don't know what it is. What it, you, you got a brown thumb up to about right there. You touch a plant, it dies. Uh, uh, but you know, absolutely, Sarah Lou, and and that's what I mean. People, that was not his talent. That was not his gifting at all. Uh, I I think when he cuts grass, it dies. It's you know, it's, <laughs> it's just how it is. But but y'all understand that it, that uh, you know. Use your giftings, use your talents, okay? Use what God gave you and, and what he did. He gave all of us that measure of faith and use that measure of faith. I want to I wanna, I wanna encourage you, use that measure of faith to find the forgiveness. Thank you, Sarah. God bless you. To find that gifting in your life that you can forgive people who don't deserve forgiveness nobody does okay and uh, people that are intentionally malicious you know from a worldly perspective even less so all right from a godly perspective sin sin okay um you know so you know uh, people will say well you know sin sin separates you from god grace covers something i don't know exactly where god's grace is going to cover you know, but let's look at it like this. I didn't forgive them so they could be better because, like I said, a lot of times the person's already gone on to meet the Lord. You might have to write a letter to forgive them. Thank you so much, Sarah. Bless you. Appreciate all that. Um, you may you may have to forgive them and not ever see them again. Never could have seen them again. Don't want to see them again. I forgive you, like I said, but I don't want you coming over. Don't be taking up no space on my couch, okay? 
Amen. There you go, Sarah. They showered in grace and covered under the blood. And if you will put those things under the blood, that's what you do. When you forgive it, you're putting it under, under the blood. And you're right, Larry, the forgiver grows. I can't make other people better. I can only make me better. I can only work with this product right here. You can only work with yourself. We can train our children, but we can't control them. We can, we can teach people, but we can't make them act on what we've taught them. We can show them, but we can't impose on them. Okay. The, um, the truth of the matter, folks talk about being, um, imprisoned and being enslaved. There was a man that went to prison for, I umpteen years. I want to say it was 37 years. Uh, I, was he in Louisiana or uh, at some, anyway, um, for murdering this person and they got DNA that after he'd been serving for 37 years, he got DNA and they proved that he did not murder this, this, this person and they freed him. And the, the, um, the, um, reporter interviewing him. I've asked him a question was like, you know, um, what was it like to be uh, imprisoned for all those years knowing you were innocent? And he said, well, he said, to say I was imprisoned, uh, he said, I was confined, but my mind was free. I read books and I, I, I survived and, and did what I had to do to survive, etc." He said, but I was never imprisoned because my mind was never imprisoned. I was never in bondage in my mind. And I was like, wow, 30 something years. I want to say it was 37 years. He was locked up for a crime he didn't commit. They proved he didn't commit it and he didn't come out with malicious and hate. I'm sure he sued the state and got a hefty settlement and as, as would be appropriate. Okay. Um, you know, uh, on the other hand, you know, they, they used what they had at the time. So, you know, modern science freed you. Um, did you see it, Larry? Okay, cool. Uh, I may not have the exact numbers down, but it was amazing testimony that that man had. That he didn't come out full of anger, vengeance, and hate. And, you know, I'm like, that's, 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 uh, that's how we should be. Okay, but I ain't been there, so I'm not gonna sit there and tell you that I could be like that. One of the one of the guys used to tell me, so well, if we ever come under fire, I'm gonna be in the front line. I'm gonna be ready to get everything and And I'm like, you know what? Here's the thing. I like to believe that I'm gonna be there. I like to believe that you're gonna be beside me. But the truth of the matter is, is until you come under fire, you don't know what you're gonna do. Okay? You can tell me all day long what you're going to do. But I've seen this in several instances when, um, when emergencies happened, uh, was on the workroom floor and this guy, he just, boy, he passed out and hit the floor and all these people, you know what they did? They all gathered around and went, Oh, look, Oh, what is it? Huh? What's wrong? What's wrong with Gary? Oh my goodness. What's wrong with Gary? Okay. Me and D jumped in there, popped in, you know, popped his airways open up, you know, Lean down, listen, he was breathing, checked his heart rate, he's got a heartbeat, boom. Okay, call 911. All right? And you say, wow. You know, you look at that. What do we got here? Somebody's trying to do, what, what are we trying to do? Make new friends with quick invites. I don't know what that is. Uh-oh, it's raining outside, y'all. I planted my garden today and it's raining. I planted my garden today and it's raining. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, I'll be standing in front of my kids. Um, but like I said, you know, um, we don't, all our answers aren't going to be good. That's a fact of the matter. All of the answers that I have are not necessarily going to be good. Do you know why? Because men don't have good answers for everything. We don't. 
We don't, we don't have a, a system of justice capable of getting justice from a person who caused another person to not show up for lunch tomorrow forever. There's no way to bring true justice. And our, our thing when we, um, you know, I, I firmly believe you're on video and you unalived people that they give you 30 days to take care of your business and get your soul in order. And, uh, and then on the 31st day, they should box you up and send you home. Um, Good night, brother, brother Curtis. God bless. Be careful out there, man. Okay. Now, am I being mean and malicious? No. Okay. I've heard people, well, it's worse to be in, in a jail cell. Yeah, I know it. I, I know what you're saying. Okay, Sarah Lou, let me know what's up. Okay. Um, you know, so, um, you got that. And I, I, I simply ask them this question right here. Okay. There, there was in this particular instance, this male person had unalived this female person. And, uh, he was uh, in his mid twenties, he was serial. And, uh, they were making the argument that, you know, that he was in worse turmoil everywhere. And I said, you know, I said, here's what I know. I know that girl's still in her grave because they were trying to parole him. I said, you know, when you start, you know, I'm a preacher. People always think you're oh, a bleeding heart. That death penalty came from the Bible, y'all. Okay. Um, but when, hey, Daniel, how's it going out there, man? Y'all in uh, that place, Rafa? You okay out there? Hallelujah. You're inside Rafa. Be careful, brother. Be careful. Our prayers, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, put your angels around Daniel and those brothers that are inside there, Lord Jesus. Protect the innocent, but put a hedge around them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're fine. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Hey, Eva, it's good to see you tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the word of the Lord be true and every man be a liar. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Cover those men and women in danger tonight, Lord Jesus, against thee. Uh, the terrors, those advocates of Satan, you know, tornadoes in Ohio tonight. Lord knows in Jesus name, keep them safe, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God protect us from the weather. Man made or otherwise want to take over the borders between Gaza and Egypt. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, my sleep is kicking in. <laughs> Larry, good night, buddy. Make sure you send me that, that address so I don't have to go look at that book to find it. Uh, it's, it's raining here, but it's not storming, praise the Lord. I'm not wanting it to storm. So, you know, a lot of work in destroying tunnels. I believe that, brother. I firmly believe it, but it's got to be done. It should never have been allowed to, to have happened. Uh, I heard the counter argument to that. Well, at least we know where they're at. I'm like, you know, I, I can't own that. That just, I can't own that for flip. You know, prevention, uh, if you do preventive maintenance, folks, your car runs longer. If you wait until something breaks, it's always harder to fix something that's already broke than it is to do preventive maintenance. Keep your oil changed. Keep your filters changed. Thank you, Miss Sarah. God bless you for all them puffs. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. Suzanne, I appreciate that. You're very kind. I appreciate all the gifts for everybody. Um, but we got to understand that we, we need to be, uh, in closing here, we need to be the, the forgivers. We need to forgive people and we need to forgive ourselves. And I can't state that, overstate that enough. We need to be forgiving of ourselves because even when you didn't do anything, the human psyche works around somehow to blame ourselves and take accountability for actions that were not in, in our scope of control. Um, there's a thing called survivor's guilt and it's happened to several of the, the people, you know, their whole unit or number of their unit was destroyed while they were on 
um, leave or they they didn't go on the, the the patrol or whatever and and uh, hit an IED and and you know buddies lost and <clears throat> and they have survivor's guilt and PTSD and, and it's a real thing okay and and they have to forgive themselves and they have to find a point where they can pass this off it's amazing it's hard it's sore it's it's uncomfortable but we need to do this, folks. We need to forgive that we can be forgiven. We need to extend the undeserved forgiveness. Hallelujah. Renee, it's so good to see you. How's Joe doing tonight? Is he okay? You're doing okay. Poor little old. She'd hurt her, hurt her back. I think last week I talked to her. She was on and uh, she'd hurt her back. And, are they moving Joe into the, uh, the facility? You, you, you said they were thinking about it, but you didn't ever say yes or no on that one. Hallelujah. You come in here just saying, so-so. Okay. You come in here just as I was signing off. But I'm so glad you're here. We pray for you every night. And we're trusting God. We're believing God. God's going to do some good things for you. And, uh, you know, there's not, not any good answers for that situation you're in. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. We want to pray right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, as we come to you, we trust and believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, to keep your hand on Joe, Renee, Carter, and uh, Tyler and Alex. God, to keep that family. Bring them closer together, God. Help them during this time. It's a tough time. Father, we ask you to move on each and every one of the needs placed in our, in our, in our prayer list, God, tonight. There's so many people. There's so many issues that, that are still here. We got Erica for employment resolutions, Naomi for her stomach, Lord, hallelujah, to, to special add those needs, God. We ask you, Lord, if you would, to continue to bless God and keep us, to move upon us, God, and have your way and your will, to help us be the people we need to be in the hour we're chosen to be here, according to your will and your purpose and your plan. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Be with Trish right now. She's at the hospital having tests run. God, move on her. God, let that, let her body be healed. Put your unction on her in Jesus' name. And we want to praise you for this and all things and glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our daughter, Rihanna, to get out of her current lease, move into the same apartment. Amen. We want to pray that be the will of the Lord right there, that Rihanna is able to move in and help her mama with her daddy. Hallelujah. 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 It's more affordable. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, honor, and praise for this and all things according to your will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Folks, I love every one of you. I hope you can be back tomorrow night. Uh, we go to church on Wednesday nights. So um, I can't promise you we'll be here. I, I, I probably, If I'll be here, I'll probably be late. Might be late. If we leave from church, I won't be late. It'll just and be right here. But I'll probably be a little bit later, and, and if, if I can't make it, I apologize in, in, in advance because if we get invited to go out to eat someplace, you know, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Cheryl, you need to come visit us, girl. You need to work it out. Give, me, give us a call. Let us work stuff out, okay? God bless each and every one of you. We will see you, Lord willing, tomorrow night. Good night. Baby.